It's Jen. And Stephanie. And today we're going to be reviewing the Winnebago View 24T. Right behind us here. Yes. Now, it's been a little minute since we've done a, view, a review of a viewer Navion yeah, on our channel. But true. this one has got us interested for a number of reasons. And the main one being the gear garage. Well, it kind of reminded us of a, our Echo, but not just that. It also has an option for a front cap that is more low profile, makes it kind of look echoey. Right. And it's available in all wheel drive. And one other big one is it's designed so that you can use the water system in all Four seasons. Four seasons, all, all yeah. So a yeah. number of things that have got us stoked about this because if this had been available when we were looking for our next RV, this, Who might, knows? Have been, this might have been a contender. Yeah, I definitely would have considered this one. So come on with us and let's check it out. Let's go. All right, like all views, this one is built on the Mercedes Sprinter chassis. Yeah, and don't forget, you can get this one in all-wheel drive. Yeah, there's some uh, Alcoa wheels up front there, and just rear of that are some running boards. Those are kind of a standard for Winnebago with the pet loops there. Yeah, and we're looking at this one with the cab over bunk, but we found one out back with the low-profile front cab. There it is. There yeah. It is. Looks a little more sporty, I think. Very much more Echo-like. I, I think so. Maybe that's why we like it so much. And this one was locked up. We didn't get to tour it, but... That's what it looks like on the outside if you get the uh, the low profile front cap. All right, so back to the one we're gonna tour. Nice big window in the door. That's even bigger than the window I put in our door. Yeah. Um, some motorized steps there. And this, that's a cable output. If you want to set up a TV, there's a power and, and cable right there for to do that on campsite Great. of the vehicle. Um, now, I'm pointing to the porch light, but more than the porch light, I was excited about the lights on the giant awning. Yeah, that's a nice feature, having that external light in the evening, even yeah. if you're not using the awning. Yeah. Now, I'm pacing off the awning. It's like five paces long. It's like a 15-foot awning. There. Well, and don't big. forget, this whole coach is 25 feet, six inches. That's, you know, long. It gives you room for a longer awning. Yeah, there you go. Okay, now... The storage compartments on this, I kind of liked because the doors open sideways. So you don't have to worry about them falling on your head or holding them up while you get stuff out. Yeah. They're, the compartments are roto-molded. So there's no seams. Like there's less opportunity for leaks with the roto-molded compartments. I believe you're pointing at the inverter, right? That's, That's the, a Xantrex 2000 okay. watt inverter. Good. And it's right there. And over there on the right, you see there's a shutoff. But more importantly to me, there's that little breaker. That means that this is equipped with a UL listed uh, electrical system with lithionics batteries. Nice. UL listing is a good safety feature, just FYI. All right. All right. Moving back here, that is the exterior part of the Dometic heater. Okay. And uh, down below, there is a propane quick connect. Now, this thing has a sizable propane tank, so that quick connect is, is a pretty good option to be able to run a grill or something. And now we're to the gem of this RV, our favorite part. Our favorite part, the gear <laughs> garage. And it is it is bigger than the gear garage in our Echo. Uh, let's see. I think it was... We took measurements. What was it? It was 48 inches tall. I remember that. And it was 28 and a half feet wide. 28 and a half inches oh. wide. <laughs> That'd be cool. <laughs> anyway, and the door latches, all the doors on these actually latch in multiple points. That's what I'm showing you. That's kind of a good security feature. Hmm. And now the gear garage runs the full width. And so we're guessing that's probably like about 85 or 80 or more, close yeah. to 90 inches wide. Right. Now the gear garage is heated. That's what I'm showing good. there. Very good. And on each side, there was a, there's going to be a light and 120 volt power. Now that is not really a shelf. That's just kind of a feature covering up the end of frame rails. So don't Okay. And now, that's the L track. I was just going to say that's very yeah. familiar to us because we have that in our Echo Gear Garage yeah, it's too. It's a great way to tie things down. It's flexible. You can move those little rings anywhere. So that really works out well for securing gear in the gear garage. On the floor, it runs side to side, like the full 80 something inches. Yeah. On the top, it stop. There's like little one foot pieces kind of at each end. And then there's another piece in the middle, I think. Okay. Now, Moving through the gear garage, this is a little pass through. That is like a hex key that like lowers the spare tire. So okay. this is a way to make that more convenient so you don't have to lay on the ground. Mm -hmm. Nice big door on the back. And again, this one, I think it also well, maybe uh, secures at multiple points. Okay. And so now again, on this side, we get again, the lights, right. the 12 volt power, 120 volt power. That is a solar panel input for like an auxiliary solar panel if you want to add more than the solar that's on the roof. Okay. Some cable there. That is a air return that works with the heater vent on the other side. And then this thing I thought was really cool and they should put it in the Echo. Um, that is a cable pass through. So like for the solar panel, but I'm thinking you could put a Starlink I in was there. just going to say that. So anything you want to pass through right there, that that's a handy feature. Yeah. And low point drains. And what I liked about those is the panel that covers them, it, it, 
attach is really easy. Like you don't need tools. You don't have to do anything. Here's exactly. another view of that L track. But the the convenient panel that just kind of twists off is was kind of a, a neat feature. All right, nice. Uh, so I'm pointing there to the uh, don't step on your glasses dude. Um, to the camera. There's two cameras in there. One for a digital rear view mirror, which we'll see, and then there's a backup camera. Oh, and here again, I'm showing the the multiple points of latching even on the back door. So extra security. That's a great thing. Yeah, nice wide door there on the back, and the trailer hitch. This is a 5,000 pound hitch with a 500 pound tongue weight and a seven point wiring harness. So that was the gear garage, and we love it. But that's not all we love here. Like the Truma Aquago and the 30 amp shore power connection. What? <laughs> anyway, th these are um, a fresh tank fill and a black tank flush. They're kind of similar looking and right next to each other. Don't get those confused. Oh, that would not be good. <laughs> yeah. yeah, this is a little mini water panel kind of thing. There's some valves in there, like for winterization. There's a switch for the Greg Schultz Memorial Dump Light. Oh, gosh. There are the uh, <laughs> handles. So these are the dump handles. For the black and gray tanks. That is interesting. They're up at like waist height, kind of. Yeah, I guess you don't have to bend down when it's time to pull the lever. But you'll still have you'll still have to bend down like to actually hook up, right? So mm -hmm. here I'm going to show the, like the the opening is still down at ground level, and, okay. And next to it, I, I did like this. There is a uh, you know sewer hose storage. Oh, right good. There. Yeah, but the the dump opening is still down where it should be, and but the valves are up there. Mm. Also. Shower. There's a little uh, little holder in the door. So if nice. you're a really short person, I guess you could take an exterior shower. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe a dog if you would trust your dog to stay there and shower. Yeah, I think that, that would be really handy for pets. Anyway, um, so that is a vent for the freshwater tank. And that is behind there is a gravity fill. Mm, okay. Uh, small window there. And now we're coming to the slide. Uh, yes, there was only the one storage cabinet in the slide. Here it is. Yep, yeah, and it, it's pretty big actually when when you get looking at it in fact it's so big that you know i mean they put a light in it i think yeah there we go they put a light in it because it's yeah it's, it's tall big. <laughs> and so then if it's tall then that got me wondering like could could i fit in there <laughs> and, and sure enough i have to try right so here we go you're, you're kind of like a cat like if there's a small cabinet you always have to test can i fit in this cabinet <laughs> It's very cat-like. Really? I guess, I, guess, I guess maybe it kind of is. Anyway, so yes, there is storage for bodies in the uh, in the view. So 24D. there you go. Oh, that vent up top, that is a proper vent to the outside for like over the range. So like cooking oh. fumes actually get sucked and blown outside. Yeah, you don't see that that often on no. seas. Now under here, under the, uh, under the slide, there are a couple storage, well not storage bays, but you know, doors. Yeah. And behind this one, we have the propane tank. That's it right there. It's it's kind of large. I think it's 12.8-ish gallons or so. It's pretty big. Nice. And then this thing over on the right, that is the, the control unit for the hydraulic leveler. So I was trying to get eyes on the, the fluid reservoir in okay. the back there. Hmm. And I couldn't quite see it, but you get a good view of the propane. You know, 12 point something gallons there, hmm. it says. Um, anyway, big propane tank. Uh, so it'll keep the appliances going for, for quite a while. Okay. Um, next to that here we have a propane generator. Yeah, you can get this with a generator or without a gen generator. That's up to you how you option it. Yeah, and I imagine just being another one of those cool roto-molded seamless storage compartments there if you didn't mm. get the generator. Yeah, good point. More storage. Yeah. Now, we're not really slide people. We don't often review things with slides, but this one has a slide. Mm -hmm. And so I was kind of trying to show the width of the slide here. Kinda. Yeah, we don't have a lot of experience with slides. We've never owned an RV with slides. So here you go, guys. This <laughs> is the slide. slide. <laughs> there's a slide topper awning on the top to keep junk yeah. from getting on top of it. Yeah. Uh, this is where you put in the diesel mm -hmm. and uh, 927 pounds cargo capacity that's what i'm trying ah, to show there okay another running board and then coming around to the front we have the one thing on the sprinters that i really wish the transits had yes that step the step it's makes so it wonderful so convenient for washing off the windshield yeah and that's that's really what i wish it had come on ford yeah. make one of those <laughs> now we usually show the roof but this one didn't have a ladder so i had to find a neighboring coach well, that how did handy have a ladder. that they had a view right next door that did have yeah. a ladder. Now, I want to point this out. It had been raining, and the, the roof was extremely slippery. So I want everyone to know the risk to life and limb I took <laughs> wow. to get this footage. 
Wow. It was, it was crazy slippery up there. Anyway, <laughs> um, so from front to back, there's a, a vent fan cover right there, and then there's the GE air conditioner, a little TV antenna. It looks mm-hmm. like about 200 watts of solar optioned up on the roof. Those are the flat. I think it was 240 watts of solar. There you go. Flat panels stuck right to the roof. Another vent fan. There is a skylight, uh, some vents. And that thing on the back left, that is for the wind connect. Now, we could do a whole video separately on the wind connect, but we'll talk about, more about that on the inside. And it does have an option for 585 watts of solar as well, so you can get more. Oh, look, we get Steph on camera. <laughs> I actually prefer being behind the camera, so I'll be on temporarily. <laughs> anyway, this is the shot we always do, like when you walk into an RV to give you a sense of what it's like. And mm-hmm. to me, when you see those house hunter shows where everybody says they want an open floor plan, to me, that's what this felt like. That is absolutely it. It is very open and spacious. And especially for a small class C like this, it gave a really warm, cozy vibe. Yep. Now we're going to take this one from the back to the front. So we're starting in the very back where there is the bathroom. And my, my key takeaway from the bathroom was a surprising amount of storage. So much storage. So you get this medicine cabinet right here, which already has so much storage. That's just one part. Oh, and there's the Truma. That's for the, the water aqua-go, heater. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, a little light switch there for some accent light lighting down by the floor. I do like all the accent lighting in this coach too. Yep. And then there's the uh, the lavatory, you know, the sink, whatever. Um, a switch for the water pump. There should be a switch for the water pump every place you need water. And yep. I think there was yep. in this coach. It's so. very convenient. All right, now this is awesome. This wardrobe is all across the back of the whole RV. It's huge, and there's something back there, and we'll get to that later. Ooh. But this is a, what's in half of the closet. So there's a lot of storage, and then that thing up top there, that's like a, a Wi-Fi router. I think that's part of the WinConnect system. Okay. Now, below here, this, I finally got the panel off. That is the back of the Truma AquaGo, and I can tell from the connections on here that this is the AquaGo comfort model, so it'll circulate hot water right up to the faucets. Ah, oh, that's great. Yep, so there we go. But that's not... But half of this cabinet, yeah. right? The cabinet goes around to the other side. Yep, here we go. Sliding doors the other way, and then we have more storage. Look at that, drawers and shelves. That's just fantastic. You can get so much stuff at back there. I might even get a shelf in this bathroom. <laughs> I could probably give you a drawer too. Wow. Yeah, right? right? <laughs> Moving on up. Okay. So now there's more storage underneath, um, as well as a place for the uh, toilet paper roll, but yeah. that cabinet actually goes back kind of behind the toilet a little bit. I think we try to, yeah, there we go. Yeah, that's awesome. Shows It shoves back up in there, so you could get more stuff there. And there's the toilet. Now, it is a china toilet. Nice. And that um, sprayer there is for cleaning the toilet. Yep, yep. And uh, since it's a porcelain bowl, you know, you won't need quite as much water there's as you sprayer. would with a plastic bowl. All right. All right, now this is the back of the entry door. So that's going up to the front of the coach, and it is a sliding door. I really like that it slides. It's not a swinging door, so you don't have a door hanging out into your precious well, You don't have space. to leave room for it in the yeah. floor plan, yeah. So now this is Steph in the shower. Um, it's got one of those film sort of shower doors. I kind of like those. Yeah, and this seat, that's fantastic. It's I mean, kind of a big seat. Yeah, it's great if you're going to stand there, you want to put your leg up to wash your leg. Love it. Yep. So now this is the shower without a person in it. Kind of a nice looking uh, set of fixtures there. There's yeah. the seat. And then this thing, which I think if you put some nets up there, you could maybe get some like shampoo bottles or something to sh- sit on that shelf. Yeah, that's a good idea. And that's kind of showing the skylight that we saw from the outside. So now we're coming forward to the galley. Yeah, and this is... Whoa! What what happened to our continuity director? I'm firing the continuity director. All right, it was hot this day. (laughs) Oh, my. Okay, so here we have a rather large sink. I think it's probably about 18 inches in diameter. It looked about the same size as the one in the Spreco, which Ah. was 18 inches. Well, I just like the look of it. And the look of that faucet as well. Countertop extension there. And below the countertop extension, we have more storage. Nice. There's a little uh, rack on the door there, a water filter underneath there, okay. and even a 120-volt outlet. That is the, uh, the circuit breakers. You can for- see some of that accent lighting there as well, too. Yeah, so there's the circuit breakers for the 120-volt system. Okay. Boom, right there. But not the fuses. Fuses are elsewhere. Great. All right. So anyway, um, more stuff here on the on the galley. There's a little kind of spice rack thing on the wall, um, some lighting there. I like the look of that backsplash, that right there. It was textured. Hmm. And it was copper. Copper accents kind of showing up throughout this thing. Yeah, I really like that look. 
All right, so now this is a rather large overhead cabinet, and I don't know that that quite does justice to how yeah, large it actually was. It was quite large. Yeah. I like the curve in it. I don't guess that's not a curve. It's an thing. angle. Yes, I like that. All right, um, we have uh, some metal blinds on the window because they are close to the range, and that is a propane. We'll, we'll get to that in a second. And then uh, we have this countertop kind of power station thing, and I think we can see on there, yeah. 120 volt and USB A and C. Nice. You can put your rice cooker there, whatever appliance you're using. A rice cooker. I like it. Mm -hmm. I like it. And a water pump switch there, again, by the sink. Pull out pantry here. Um, a double decker pull wow. out pantry. They've done a fantastic job with storage in yep. this floor plan. All right. Some, uh, some light switches here. One of them for accent lights you can see up there. And then another one for kind of just general overhead lights. I think that's what that one is. Okay. Now we're on to the fridge. This was kind of big. Yeah. It was. It was. It was like nine point seven five cubic something feet, like that. something around there. I'm not I, th sure. I think we get to that in a minute. But okay. anyway, it's a twelve volt compressor fr fridge. It's Norcold. It's got a night mode. It's got all the latest kind of controls and whatnot on it that you might want. Separate fridge and freezer space, so there's not like you know in, in the Echo with the separate yeah. door. Yeah, yeah. Um, but plenty of room in yeah. that fridge. And here we go. 276 liters, which is 9.75 cubic feet. Nice. All right. I really like this. So you've got the induction cooktop and you have the propane. I love that you have options. I mean, if you're plugged in at the RV park you, and you don't want to burn up your propane, you can use the induction. There you go. Um, convection microwave. This is a full width residential convect 30 inch wide convection microwave. That's got the vent fan on the underside that goes yeah. to that Fan that Ooh, I like these pull-out drawers. They had there was a light in there. I, I don't know that you can tell right now, but the, well, you, you can kind of see the shadow in the back yeah. when you push the drawer in. There's yeah, they were lit. Yeah, there which, that one you could tell more. Yeah, which that was would come fantastic. in very very handy. All right, so now we're moving up to the dinette. And the table and chairs I kind of found interesting. We'll get to that in a bit. But first we have this cabinet and there was a lot of stuff. Yeah, there's the Blu-ray player. Uh, controls for the slide room and then that unlabeled one next to it. That's for the bed. We will definitely be showing you that. And then up above, there's a bunch of other AV type connections. So there's a cable pass through, there's 12 volt power. If you want something 12 volt powered, USB, A and C. There's the control for the TV antenna, which is a powered antenna, HDMI, yada, yada, yada. And then there's WinConnect. Now we could do a whole video on WinConnect. Yeah, for sure. But basically what I like to think of WinConnect as is like smart home, but for your RV. Yeah, so it allows you to control your systems all in one place and remotely from your phone. And it sends you alerts, like if your tank is almost full. Well, don't do that <laughs> with the gray water overflow. So it also will control your lights and whatnot. But to me, that's kind of the least interesting thing is controlling the lights, big whoop, right? The, the more interesting thing to me is see they've got the thermostat and they've mm -hmm. got the roof fan programmed in there. So that opens up possibilities to do something like Try to keep cool with the roof fan. If yeah. that's not cutting it, then close the fans and turn on the air conditioning. Oh, uh, yeah, that's nice. So if you've got pets like we do, that's kind of a big deal. Well, it, well, I just like seeing all the controls in one place. Yeah. So anyway, that's WinConnect. There's a whole lot more about it. Um, but we on to our struggles with the television. <laughs> um, we tried. We tried. I'm sure it works great. We weren't able to figure out which remote went to it. So. Yeah. Anyway, storage. And the storage even goes behind the yeah. television, which was sort of interest, sort of more of that storage yeah, thing. Yeah, nice to going see. Yep. Anyway, uh, pretty good sized TV. And uh, anyway, yeah. lots of storage. Now, the other thing that we're, I think is interesting to me is these table and chairs, and they're not built in. Yeah, and we had a whole discussion about this. I like that they're not built in. It's more like a home. Nothing's built in in your home, so I like that you can move the chairs around. Yeah, I suppose it would be weird at home if all your furniture was attached to a wall. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, um, but since you have to move the chairs around. There's also like a leash, and I guess this is kind of more of a thing for like class A's or whatever. They have leashes to hold them in place while you're underway so the chairs don't go banging around. Right, right. right. You fold them up and you put them, store them up there for yeah. travel. Now, when you drop the table, you wind up with what to me seemed like a surprising amount of room in there, and we'll show you more on that in a bit. There's cabinets each side as well as 120 volt power, 12 volt, and USB A and C both sides. To me, that looks like it's set up for two people to work at. Yeah, I think it would be a comfortable place for remote work right yeah. there. And and like I said, two sets of controls and whatever, so two people could work there. That's just a passive vent to heat some water lines. Those are the vents for the heater. Okay. 
So now here we're showing how much open, wide space you have. And, you can have a dance party. And we should, that reminds what? me of Elaine. Yeah, it is kind of lane -ish. But now here I'm more at home. Yeah, Look this. at this. And the point here is you've got space to work out inside your RV on bad weather days. That is fantastic and such a compact coach like this. Yep, And easy to put back together when you're done jumping around. And finally, we're getting to the sofa and bed flex space. Yeah, and this has a lot of different modes, and I'm going to get all into them. Like, the, first, there's these tables mm -hmm. that kind of pop into the arms of the... Well, in this way, it's set up as a sofa, but you can also set it up as recliners. Yeah, and we haven't even touched on the color scheme yet. This is the Huga option with this interesting clay color. And Huga, it's a it's a Danish concept about living well and feeling warm and cozy and Danish, safe. Danish, like Hamlet. <laughs> What? <laughs> <laughs> Hamlet was Danish. Anyway, but it, it, everything in the coach, all those copper accents I was talking about before, it all ties into yeah. this this same Huga color scheme. So Yeah, I really like it. There's another color option too, but I prefer this one. Yep. Okay, so now here we are. We're showing some, uh, again, on the sides of the sofa. You had USB, ANC, and 120 volt outlets, and some lights there over the over the bed. Okay. Or not bed, sofa in this way. And some pockets here on the back of the, the wing wall. Yeah, there's that clay color again, even on the pockets. Look at this. Now it's recliners with nice. light up cup holders. Who doesn't need wow. a light up cup? cup holder. That's cool. <laughs> anyway, so now I'm going to convert it into, into bed mode. And so you drop the back of the sofa down or the recliners down, you pop out the legs and then that control over in the, over in the cabinet where all the audio visual stuff was mm -hmm. real time. Boom. There we go. Beds down. That's it. It's so easy. Yep. Now the bed, it was, it seemed to me, it seemed queen in width. Oh yeah, another fail trying to get the TV working coming here, but oh. you could watch TV very well from the bed here, by the way. Yeah. But it seemed like a queen in width. Maybe even wider, I'm not sure. Yeah, we don't but, have but the mattress. definitely shorter to me than, than a queen. So like okay. a queen short is yeah. what it felt the like. The mattress was comfortable, it felt fine to me. Yep, and that's what it looks like with the uh, two Pretend to be adults on it. Um, <laughs> anyway, uh, MCD shades over the windows, over the over the bed, both on the head of the bed and there on the side yep. of the slide. MCD shades. A lot of storage. This is a really large mm -hmm. cabinet. Yeah, but remember, that's going to be hidden away with when the bed is closed. Ah, good point. So, but it does pass mind. through. Like if you had like a long fishing yeah. pole or something, you might could get it or pool cue if you yeah. travel with pool. Nobody travels in pool cues. <laughs> well, <laughs> anyway, maybe. here's walking from the front to the back with the with the bed down and the slide out, and that's putting the bed up. Okay. It just kind of folds away like that, and then you flip the back of the sofa or the recliners up or the sofa if you want it all. And, and you're ready for your day. Yep. Now, I am going to show you bringing the slide in because this was kind of important. They said you could you could put the bed down with the slide in, but I didn't believe them. I had to try it. So... This is the slide coming in, and I was terrified. I thought it was going to hit the cabinet, <laughs> but it didn't. Success! Look yeah. at that. That's great. Now, I should have put the legs down before I dropped it, but I was really worried it was going to hit the cabinet, <laughs> so I didn't want to put the legs down. But, but you know, when you're staying at a Walmart, you don't always want to put your slide out. You want to try to look more stealth, so you could do that. Yeah, then. it's totally doable in this configuration. Obviously, walk in front to back, you know, is going to be a little yeah. impeded. Yeah. But it's totally do it. Now, watching TV like that would not really work. I mean, you could if you really <laughs> wanted to. You might yeah. get a neck crick. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, and then the table really wouldn't go up. So if you were going to eat or something, you'd want to do it in the like recliner mode in the space. Yeah. But now when you're driving, you could walk from the front to the back. There's enough room to walk back to the bathroom while someone is driving. Yeah. Not that we recommend anyone do that. <laughs> And since the cab over bunk seems a bit like a kid's fort, we sent the 10-year-old up there to check it out. <laughs> well, I resemble that remark. <laughs> really? And, and it, I, it, I wanted to go up because it seems kind of cool. <laughs> anyway, there's a lot of room up here. There's enough room for me to lie down, like, without scrunching up or anything. So I think you could get kind of large-ish kids. You could get here. two, yeah. Yeah, it's plenty big for two kids. So now these uh, these panels on the side snap up the window shades, and they're, they're kind of padded, which makes me think they'd be fairly well insulated. Might keep it from getting 
too hot up there. Good. Yeah. Now there's a privacy curtain up there, um, and that's fine. You know, I guess it'll help keep it darker up there if mm-hmm. somebody's trying to sleep. And then one thing that I thought was pretty darn cool was even up there, there is an air conditioning vent. Oh yeah, that's a great idea. That's 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 going to be appreciated if anyone yeah. decides to make residence in that area. Okay. Also. Places to plug in your devices, 120 volt, USB, 12 volt, yada, yada, yada. Okay. It's all up there. Great. Oh, and this is the uh, the van life butt shot. <laughs> <laughs> There's a much smaller window than out there. I, I apologize <laughs> for that. And, and I guess also this uh, center panel, if you're not using it as a bed, that removes for easier access to and from the cab. That's where we're headed next. Yep. Now, the first thing to note about the cab is there's kind of a big step difference between the, the height of the, the house and the cab. So yeah. be, be aware of that. The Sprinter has that swanky look. I really like the dash of it. I really like the digital rear view mirror. Yeah. Those th- I want one of those so bad. That Me it's too. way it's better awesome. than a regular rear view mirror. Hi, Nang. <laughs> <laughs> and then again, there's Sprinter cab. I don't think we need to go in all those features, but it's swanky like a Sprinter cab. Yeah. Uh, so a light and an alarm, that little round thing is a, a speaker for if you have the stabilizer jack stand, it'll beep at you. Okay. And there's some storage up there on in the, the dash. In the top of the dash. Mm-hmm. I like the seat color. Yeah. They even got that Huga color in there. I like that. No, the seats are power seats, so they're great for like having memory of the different seat positions, but they're going to be a little slower to operate than like a manual seat. So the seats turn around to be at the same level as the coach seating, so you can raise the seat. I like that. You, you don't need a booster cushion to sit on it. Right. I guess it makes it more functional to be an actual part of the living space. Right. And they both, they both do that. Yep. Um, plenty of headroom. The Sprinter works well for taller folks who, uh, who like to drive. And then I thought this was kind of cool, this little cubby for the key, right in the dash. And as always, James is headed underneath. That's right. We're starting just here aft of the stairs. And right up there on the top left, that's the battery box. What are the battery options on this thing? So it comes with a 320 amp hour lithium battery. And there's an option to add an additional 630 amp hour battery. So that's a 12 kilowatt hour system. That's huge. Right? Now, what I'm showing here is the outside of one of those roto molded compartments. Notice there's no seam in the corner. So reduced chance for leaks in your storage compartments. Good. All right, so now I've moved to the back and I'm taking a look from the passenger side towards the driver's side and the dump valves, and that's one of the tanks. And it looks like a tank flush coming in there. So I'm guessing that's the black tank, but I thought I remembered it being on the other side. Anyway, Hmm. one of the the storage tanks there. Showing the suspension here, she's riding heavy. Uh, There's no denying that. So notice the, the leaf springs are kind of inverted a little bit, but we still have 900 pounds of cargo capacity. So we're okay there. Um, some jacks here and then the plumbing run from the one tank all the way over to the other side where the dump valve is. There's the, uh, the sewer hose storage. And then we're going to see here, I think the inside or the underside of what I was showing in the gear garage, the, that little silver thing there. And that is the, the lift to lift up a spare tire under there. Now there was not a spare tire here, but that's where the lift is. Mm. That is a large propane tank, and there is the underside of the generator. So that's our review. We'd love to know what you all think. Well, I know what I thought. Hmm. I thought I really dug the extra height and the width in that gear garage back there. I could do a lot with that kind of space. Well, and for me, I really like just the overall vibe. It's very homey, very comfortable inside. I guess it's that whole Huga. They even have it on a pillow. Huga theme that they're going with. And you know what else I noticed? My pants match. <laughs> well, I, I don't change my dress to match the RV decor, but very well done. Why, thank you. Anyway, if you have comments, questions, um, hop on over to the Fit RV website. There will be a link down in the YouTube description down below, and we will try our best to get them answered. We're interested to hear what you thought, but that's going to do it. <laughs> Thanks, everybody, for watching. Bye. I'm not closing the door because you might get stuck oh in God. there. Oh God, I'll close it and lock it. <laughs> yeah, close the door and then just fill. I'm fill afraid yourself we won't open get it open. Yeah. What, if we, what if we can't get it open? We can. I can see the latch in here. He can undo it from in there. there oh my go. God. That's, I'm having like claustrophobia for Tell you. I'm going to leave him in there. Are you okay? <laughs> <laughs>